Okay. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. So I'm uh, first. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Zebras and uh, Zwei for the invitation. Uh, I'm uh, from the uh, Master Department of the Hong Kong Baptist University. A professor there. I'm uh, mainly classify myself as working in the uh, mathematical physics. But uh, anyway, today I try to talk something related to the data science. Try to fit this uh, the theme of this conference. Right. Actually, this is the first time I give this talk formally. Uh, uh, I prepared this slide yesterday, last night. So, anyway, so uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, how some uh, classical uh, uh, approach in the mathematical physics in the scattering theory uh, can be applied to the data science. I mean, mainly in the machine learning and this uh, so-called artificial intelligence, uh, so-called computing technology. Uh, uh, so uh, anyway, so let's start with some uh, uh, mathematics. I, you know, I tried to make the mathematics uh, uh, as simple as possible. I, I don't want uh, it, to, uh, it's a torture to you, okay? So, so uh, let's start with this uh, so-called direct scattering and the inverse scattering. But this scattering is different from the previous uh, speaker, Professor Wang Yang. This is mainly about the wave scattering. This is mathematical physics things, okay? So anyway, this is a simple illustration. Uh, okay, start with this. You know, the left slides. You know, it's a it's a, a plane wave. You know, time harmonic plane wave with a fixed frequency. It's just mathematically it's just a free uh, basis. Okay, so you see this is a plane wave propagating in the in the homogeneous space. But if the space uh, there's some inhomogeneity, I mean it's called a scattering. So the wave propagation gonna be perturbed. So this uh, this perturbation is called this uh, scattering. So uh, for the um, for the mathematical study of this uh, wave scattering, we are mainly concerned with this. You know, given this scatterer, I want to determine the scattering, the perturbation behavior of this uh, uh, of the wave propagation. But the inverse scattering is that uh, given this uh, scattered wave pattern, I want to determine this unknown scattering. Uh, basically, this is uh, how we hear the world, how we see this world. You know, if you hear the world mainly because it's sound wave got put this thing, but it's, uh, you see the world because it's uh, electromagnetic wave got a uh, scattering. Okay, so that's basically is described by this uh, simple wave question. Okay, this is a very simple wave question. But since we only consider this uh, single frequency, so it's described by this wave question. This is so called Helmholtz question. It's key is just uh, is the frequency of the wave. Okay, so now. Uh, let's consider there are two typical scattering scenario. The first is that the wave scattering is generated by a light by a source. Okay, this is a light source. Okay, it generates uh, uh, this uh, wave wave pattern. Okay, the other one is just uh, scattering from a uh, you know inactive uh, inhomogeneous object like this radar. So basically, you send uh, this radar wave. This wave uh, intact with this uh, air uh, aircraft gonna generate this wave pattern. Uh, this scattering wave. It's very two typical scattering phenomena. Okay. Anyway, let's. Uh, I, I only spend a few slides on this mathematics. Okay. Try trust me. Only maybe three or, f or four slides about this mathematics. It's uh, not not gonna be a torture. Okay. The first one is described. Uh, the first scattering scenario is scattering wave scattering is generated uh, from a source. Okay. Described by this wave question. As K is the frequency. It's half is the source. You get this uh, boundary condition because we, we consider this scattering in the whole space. So have to impose the boundary condition at the infinity. Okay, it's uh, a decay condition. So the source has the compact support. It's omega. I want to emphasize this is the compact su support omega. Okay, so basically you can. Uh, this is a very simple partial differential equation. Basically, you can solve this explicitly, very easy. Okay, you use the limiting absorption principle, do the inverse free transform, you got this solution, it's described by this integral uh, equation. So here, this is, uh, this is, uh, this, you know, this, uh, this term is the fundamental solution of this partial difference operator. Okay, very simple. But uh, basically, I want to emphasize here, you got this so-called far field pattern. How to do that? This is a very simple mathematical technique called this, uh, Stationary phase. Basically, you take this leading order term. That's a leading singularity order term. So basically, it's uh, you got this so-called far field pattern. It defined on the unit sphere. Okay. So this is called as the far field pattern. Basically, this far field pattern encodes all this scattering information of this source. Okay. 
I want to emphasize, okay? So the second scenario, this is a sec you know, trust me, I'm going to finish this mathematics uh, very soon, okay? So this is the second scenario. So basically, this time, the object is the inhomogeneous. Describe the function, call this the index of refraction. Uh, basically, you, try, you, you send an instant wave to generate this scattering. So basically, this uh, instant wave is an entire solution to this uh, Helmholtz equation. So basically, you always take this uh, so-called plan wave, okay? This is the frequency. D is the instant direction. Which direction you send the wave, okay? So basically, so this is, uh, this is you've got this uh, medium scattering. So, uh, this, you know, in the space, you've got this uh, composition of this uh, instant wave and this scattered wave. So, it, 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 you know, this uh, total wave satisfies this so-called Helmholtz equation, but you've got a coefficient here because you've got an inhomogeneous uh, medium. Okay, you've got this boundary condition. Basically, this, this scattering system can be reduced to the prefix Y. How? Basically, you know, this uh, wave gonna interact with this medium, generate the so-called volume potential. It's kind of uh, play, play the role as a, like a source. So this source generates this scattering wave. So how uh, mathematically that uh, described as a so-called uh, uh, this Lippmann Swinger integral question? You got the source, this scattering wave in the previous uh, slide described in the previous slides is again described as this uh, source scattering, but this source it is given by this. But this is the US is all known, it's given by this deep mind swinger integral great thing. It generates a volume potential, okay? So again, you've got this uh, far field pattern. So all this uh, scattered wave, you know, all the information of this uh, scattered wave is encoded into this uh, far field pattern. This far field pattern is uh, defined over the unit sphere. It's a very simple function, okay? So, okay. Now, the inverse scattering is uh, basically. Uh, given this uh, far field pattern, we want to determine this uh, source or this uh, medium. Okay, I want to emphasize this is a nonlinear problem. Even though the, the, the forward scattering problem is uh, it's, uh, linear, it's a linear model, but this uh, inverse problem is nonlinear. Basically, you want to, you know, using a function defined on the unit sphere, you want to recover this, uh, this is a, a, a function defined over this omega or function med medium parameter defined over this. Uh, a bounded domain, okay? So this is basically this is a very, you know, uh, you, know uh, uh, you know, common working prototype model for, you know, radar, like sonar, medical imaging, this is uh, geophysical exploration, and uh, many other applications, okay? But today, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this, those applications. I'm going to talk about some applications of using this, uh, uh, this model to the data, to the machine learning and this, uh, you know, artificial intelligence. How could we do that? Now I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about that in the next few. In the next, you know, it's the main talk in my slide. You know, it's uh, it's coming. Okay. Okay. The first one. Let's uh, talk about this. Uh, you know, for this inverse scattering program. You know, we want to use this function to recover this function. But now there's another another very you know wide known and well known geometric inverse program is that, uh, you know, we do not care about this content of this scattering. We only want to find this, uh, find this, uh, the shape, the shape of this uh, 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 object, okay? We do not care about the content. I only care about the shape, okay? So, so there is a very long and colorful history about this inverse uh, shape problem. Many results have been uh, uh, achieved, okay? So there is a very classical unique correspondence result. Basically, it says that, you know, this is far field pattern collecting for all the observation directions this x hat. It's where you observe this data. And all the instant direction, you know, where you send this uh, detecting wave. You know, all the instant direction, all the observation direction, and all the frequency. So this faxing, you know, can uniquely determine this, uh, uh, the shape of this uh, 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 schedule. You know, independent of its uh, uh, content. Okay, this is a very classical result. I said this is a very extremely, you know, it's an extremely beautiful result. Why? Let me explain this. This is a one to one correspondence. It's actually uh, give a global parameterization from the space of geometry to the space of data. How? How to interpret, interpret that? Okay, look at this. It's omega. It's omega is the shape of this scattering, it's the geometry. Okay, but now this is a far field pattern. It's a function defined, very simple function defined over the unit sphere. 
So this is the fact thing. So basically, using the scattering correspondence, we established a one-to-one -one correspondence between the space of geometries to the space of functions. Okay. Well, moreover, this uh, far-field pattern is analytic. It's very, it's very smooth function. Okay. And also, it serves as the global parameterization of this uh, omega. How? How uh, you know from omega to you to the far-field pattern to this function? You just solve this uh, Helmholtz system. Okay, and how from this u infinity to this omega? Okay, and I emphasize this is a nonlinear program. But anyway, there are many many ways you know developed by this inverse scattering community. You can do this optimization with the Newton's type method, but this is not nowadays no, nobody uses this. There are many other ways like this uh, uh, free types method or sampling types method. You can use this uh, point certain line certain even sub manifold certain to do this uh, you know reconstruction from this uh, you know, simple function far field pattern to the geometry, to the omega. Okay? Uh, moreover, okay, this far field pattern you know, defined on the unit sphere, basically you get, a, you get a, this uh, free uh, uh, you know, uh, expansion. This is why A is the spherical harmonics. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, orthogonal basis on the, on the, uh, the free basis on the unit sphere. Okay? So basically, now, you got this uh, far field pattern, it actually can be, uh, you know, one to one correspond to this, uh, you know, uh, that's free coefficients. It's again data. So now, using this together representation, you know, geometry, uh, you know, geometry is an object, you know, the shape. Omega can be, you know, re uniquely represented as a vector. It's a data. So now, you know, using this uh, uh, scattering correspondence, we established a one to one correspondence between, from the space of uh, geometries to the space of data. Okay, this is what I want to emphasize. Now, how, how do you represent uh, a, a, a geometry? Just a set of data, you know, a vector. Okay, so basically use that, uh, you know, I want to emphasize this, you know, I use this, uh, all this, uh, uh, all this, uh, you know, uh, the, the far field pattern collected uh, uh, from all the observation directions, instant direction. But anyway, in the in the scattering theory, there is a very long-standing uh, open problem. You know whether we can represent establish this unique uh, correspondence between this geometry and this far field pattern with a fixed, you know, instant instant wave. You know, and we use a very few data to do the representation. But this is the last standing. This is called as uh, Seifert's problem. It carries the name by these uh, three great mathematicians. Uh, it's uh, M. Seifer, Peter Lux, and this uh, Ralph Phillips, okay? How could you establish this one-to-one -one correspondence between the geometry and the data using as few as possible data? Okay? But anyway, uh, you know, you know, myself, you know, I, you know, I, this is one of my favorite topic, you know, this is a very pure mathematical program, you know, I, I you know, my, I, you know, many mathematicians, including myself, have made uh, a lot of uh, good pro progress on this uh, open program, you know, mainly, not surprising, the singularities and the curvature of this uh, shape plays a critical role, but I just, I, I just want to uh, advertise this, uh, you know, this is very beautiful program. Now you can also do this uh, electromagnetic scattering. Now this time you can use this, uh, you know, electromagnetic waves. You know, actually you can also get this far field pattern. Do this one-to-one -one correspondence between the geometry and this, uh, you know, the the electromagnetic far field pattern. Okay, but actually in human eyes, every shape is actually a certain electromagnetic far field pattern. And that means what? Uh, you know, that means every shape in our human eyes is actually a high dimensional vector formed by the corresponding Fourier coefficient. That's how I, descri I described earlier. Okay? So, okay, now let's do this, uh, you know, how can we apply this kind of thing to the uh, machine learning and this artificial intelligence. So, the first one is uh, we consider the so-called geometric body generation. Okay? What do we mean ge geometric body generation? This is uh, the basic setup of our uh, study. Okay, suppose you are giving a set of, uh, uh, suppose giving a set of, uh, of a characteristic parameter like this uh, height, weight, you know, the width, you know, this, uh, uh, this is called the character, characteristic parameters. Now I'm asking, can we generate a body, a human body first, you know, possess those characteristic parameters? Second, Suppose those characteristic parameters are coming from a real human body. The, can we, you know, 
can this uh, generated the human body uh, be you know, a, a good approximation to a real body? This is, uh, this is the question I, we want to do, okay? I mean, given a set of uh, uh, you know, characteristic parameters, can, can we generate a body, okay? Fitting those uh, uh, characteristic parameters is the main task, okay? So the, 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 the uh, why we do this, okay? This is many applications. Okay, now the first one, okay, this is a very typical scenario. We will do the online shopping. This is what it look like on the, you know, we will do the online shopping. This is what it look like on the model, okay? But now this is what you, what you, what it look like after you fit on, you know? After you, you try on, you, after you get this online, you know, this, uh, you know, the closest. Why? Because the size is not fitting, right? Because the size is, uh, you know, is uh, misfitting, okay? So definitely, before you make the process, you want to do what? You want to input those characteristic parameters of yourself into the online store. You want to generate a body, okay? And then you try on those uh, digitalized clothes and look at the effect before you make the process. Okay, this is uh, basically one of the motivation of our study, okay? The second why? Is, uh, is this uh, criminal detection, okay, for example, you know, this is a very common thing in the criminal detection, you know, this eyewitness always uh, describe a few of uh, characteristic parameters of this uh, uh, criminal people and the, uh, the, the police try to, you know, generate a, a, a body shape that fits those, you know, character, you know, that's really, a, you know, a good approximation to the real criminal, right? This is another application, there are many, many applications, not only this virtual fitting room size uh, recommendation for the online shopping, but also this uh, weight loss prediction. This is, uh, you know, now what do you look like, but you want to predict after you look, uh, lose some weight, what your body looks like after, you know, you lose some weight. You know, that means after the change of the characteristic parameter. Okay, also this uh, plastic surgery, okay, it's a lot of applications, you know, uh, basically ask you to produce a human body by prescribing a set of uh, uh, characteristic parameters, okay. So now how can we do that? We do the machine learning, okay. Do the machine learning, how can we do the machine learning? This is what, how we do. We first, uh, you know, it's the training this set, uh, uh, you know, some uh, pre-processed pre body shapes associated with the properly uh, sampled characteristic parameters. So each, uh, each body is a top, you know, basically it's an open bounded domain. Okay, it's just a set. I do not want to make it uh, more complicated. Okay, I, definitely we can appeal for more general study mathematically. But anyway, this body is, uh, is uh, you know, it's an open bounded domain. It's characterized by a set of, uh, you know, characteristic parameters, you know, like this height, weight, you know, those, uh, you know, those are real numbers. It's a real numbers, okay? So this is a geometric, you know, a geometric shape. It basically, you know, this is uh, uh, can be described by this uh, pair. It's a vector. It's lambda d is the characteristic parameter. It's a real vector. But this d is the geometric body. It's uh, it's uh, the bounded domain, okay? But anyway, using this scattering correspondence, we know that this d can be, you know, uniquely represented by this, uh, you know, vector. It's the vector. Alpha A is the, is the coefficient coming from this uh, scattering correspondence, right? I described it earlier. So basically now, your training data becomes a set of high dimensional vector point in this space. No, that's here is just a no geometry. No geometry, just uh, some data points. High dimensional data points, okay? Now it's, the, now it's the easier. How can you do this learning model? It's just to do the cubic spline inter interpreting. You interpret those uh, high dimensional data, satisfy this relation. You know, you can do other uh, uh, polynomial interpolation. Why do not do optimization? Because we know this uh, far field pattern is a smooth function. No necessary to do any optimization or any, any, any other, you know, you know, mathematical tricks. Just a simple interpolation. You, you find this multi-dimensional vector, you know, multi-dimensional polynomial, you do the inference. Just uh, given this characteristic set, you use the learning model to generate this free coefficients. You generate the far field pattern. From the far field pattern, you solve this inverse problem, inverse scattering. You got this body shape. Okay, that's just so simple. Okay. Now, let, definitely, let me give some. Uh, you know, this is. Uh, you know, this is our paper. Okay, this is our paper. Can, if you are interested, you can come to check. Anyway, I just give some. Uh, uh, some. Oh, no, here is uh, one remarks. Uh, how to. How, here is some common ways to 
represent here my body shapes you know this is the characteristic parameter it could be this uh, uh step you know the head the arm length neck length you know this body mass index gender is those are the real vectors it is the characteristic parameters okay and anyway, here is some uh, some uh, illustration of this uh, uh, you know numerical simulation okay we do this uh, you know totally uh, we do this the, the training body data is totally you know 25 body shapes uh, we, we only choose two characteristic parameters now basically this is the heat and the weight now why i do that i do not have a very powerful computer i just do this uh, you know a simple illustration okay if you get a powerful computer you can do you know you can do you know you choose more characteristic parameters more training data set you can get a much better result but i only choose a very small sample let's see how the effect okay this is uh, you know some uh, typical Examples from of this uh, training data set, you know, this is uh, this is the uh, height, this is the weight, okay. This is the four examples. I used totally twenty-five, okay. So I, I input this. Oh, sorry. This is the weight. The height is. Uh, this is the input uh, characteristic parameter. Here, this is. Uh, uh, sorry, this is a typo. Okay, this is the height. It's one point five five. This is uh, the 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 weight. The weight is this. Uh, is this one? Okay. So I only use this. Uh, 25 training uh, body uh, training bodies data and the two characteristic parameters here okay this is the generated this is the learning output okay this is the true body this is the true body okay you can see it's at least to give some uh, reasonable result as i said if you use more training data body if you use more characteristic parameter you can get a very good reconstruction trust me but uh, I, 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 I think that's uh, just uh, you know, a natural consequence, I mean, not the main point of our study. Okay, okay so I still got a little bit of time. I talked about this uh, jet computing, that's for the machine learning, but I see how this, uh, how this uh, uh, scattering uh, approach can be used for this uh, you know, jet computing. What do you mean jet computing? Here is some uh, illustration. You see, this is Tom Cruise from this uh, minority report. He uses his hand, the gesture to manipulate the computer. And also, it's uh, some conceptual application of uh, doing this, uh, you know, the surgery using this gesture. Okay. And also, this, uh, this is already applied in reality. reality it's that you're playing the game, uh, you're using the gesture. Okay. Here is, uh, oh, uh, I tried this before, but anyway, this is not working. So this is a video illustration you know, how this suggests are working. Uh, this is from our earlier paper. This is our earlier paper. From my, we collaborated with my students and the postdocs. You know, it's, uh, I used the suggestion to, to, you know, to control my computer in my office. We use that to uh, illustrate this idea. But anyway, since uh, this kind of a compute, just a computing technology has already been developed mainly in the imaging processing community, they use the camera to capture this, uh, you know, gesture of this, uh, you know, instructor and to translate into this uh, instructions. Okay, but anyway, here is, uh, you know, here is our design. We use the inverse gathering, you know, waves gathering. Instead of a camera, we use the sensor. You know, generate a point, uh, you know, point source. You know, interact with the instructor. If the instructor performs some gesture, you know, perturb this scattering wave, uh, perturb this wave, generate this scattered wave. We use that scattered, scattered wave to find the gesture. It's just the body shapes. This is a simple idea. Okay, but how? Now, what the advantage is of our tactic? Is basically, if you use that, you have to have first to have to have a very good lighting, uh, lightning condition. But if using this wave, you do not. You know, you do not uh, need to have a very good lighting condition. The second is that you, don't, you do not even fit this, you know, fit this camera. You can just uh, do this, you know, the camera cannot see you, but you need the wave, you do not have that problem, right? But anyway, this is another design, you know, recently, you know, you, you, instead of using this uh, gesture, we use this, uh, you know, the, the, the point scatter, we, we, we track this, uh, the trajectory, the motion tra trajectory of this point scatter, we can use this uh, design, this input output device, okay? It's still this inverse scattering tactic, okay? You can, you can do this, okay? You know, it's, uh, this, this screen is going to display this, okay? Then track this, uh, uh, track this, uh, you know, the, the, the motion trajectory. You can do this, hello, okay? It's, uh, and all those are based on this, uh, uh, you know, the wave scattering. And then it's a very simple application of this uh, mathematical study of this uh, scattering theory, 
Okay, but I want to say that uh, I find some interesting, interesting application in this data science and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Actually, we are now uh, cooperating, cooperating with some uh, practitioners. Uh, hope some, uh, you know, we can produce the real, uh, you know, the devices uh, into real applications. Hope something good is going to happen soon. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay. Dimension. Oh, I would emphasize. Okay. Uh, as I said, it's a uh, each geometric uh, body shape is just uh, a set of uh, three coefficients, right? It's a uh, actually we only use the first five. Because I said I do not, I do not, we do not, I do not have a very powerful computer. I only use the first five uh, three coefficients. So that means uh, uh, for this, uh, for this, for this uh, examples. The input, the input, the input is just a two-dimensional vector. The output is a five-dimensional vector. Very, very small size. As I said, if you use a high-dimensional, you can generate very accurate uh, body shapes. Trust me. Okay, I'm gonna use a very small, you know, size. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in the in the in the uh, yeah. example you show that like you draw OK and hello. Yeah. So, does the sequence of like all those uh, shapes appear matters? Yeah, yeah. You go from inverse to clockwise versus counterclockwise. Would that cause a difference in the? Uh, Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. But actually, for this hello, there's some connections between this world and this world, but definitely. That basically recapture the motion trajectory. But you, if you go different direction, definitely you get a different. Uh, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah, yes, yes. But that's another, that's just another issue for the imaging processing people, I think. No, no, for me, I think. <laughs> okay. Now, um, this concludes our section, and thank you very much. Uh, thank you.